So it's early September. Of course, good friend, Dwayne D'Andrea, Malm Valley Sport Fishing. Yeah. I always get that wrong, but I got it right this time. And what do we expect? We're on the Columbia, kind of off season, I'm thinking. Yeah, it is. Peak season for us for the fly fishing is, yeah. is July. July. Just yeah. smoking hot for yeah. the caddis. That dry fly. Dry fly. Dry fly. So now, with the weather being so nice this fall, we're going to target some walleye. They're here. They're good eating fish. So we're going to start with the spinning gear okay. and hopefully get in some fly fishing as well. Start with That's what? What did you like say? Start with what? The we're spinning gonna, gear? We're going to put you on a spinning rod. He's going to turn me to the dark side. And yeah. I, you know what? I've, I've done it before. Yeah. I mean, we all have. We grew up doing that with yeah. the spinning rod. And yeah. I'm looking forward to yeah. it. I want to try that for a bit. It should be a lot of fun. It's a good way to utilize this time of the year. Look at it. I got my fly rod out and everything. Yep. So you're telling me i got to put it away? In a bit. <sighs> okay. Well, when we come back, you know what? This, today on Sport Fishing on the Fly, going to be a little bit of spin casting for walleye. Some, some what? Fly fishing for walleye and some maybe some big hogs later on some dry fly yeah we're gonna give it a try mixed bag stay tuned <laughs> Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, Precision Reels. The Frog Boat, inspired by nature, ingenious by design. And the Freshwater Fishery Society of BC. Catch what you've been missing, Go Fish BC. got me on this bizarre setup. See, I, I do know how to use one. Just trying it out. Can go to the dark side for a bit. We're gonna let it go straight down. Because at this time of year out here, we're trying for the walleye, the rainbow, everything. Everything we have the opportunity for. Hatches have kind of stopped. So it's perfect timing to get the old spinning rod out. Give it a go. So what am I doing? When do I stop? When it hits. Ah, there, there. I'm on the bottom. Then just jig it. You bring it up a little bit yeah. off the bottom and then tap the bottom on your down stroke there. And if you lose touch with the bottom, open your bail again. Because contours change, right? I've lost touch. Oh, there we go. Okay. And if you feel anything, a pause, a bump, yeah. set the hook. Set the hook. It could be a rock, yeah, but well. at least you're in the zone. Spinning guys, eh? Gear guys. He's got me turn to the dark side. I love it. Nope. Bottom. Almost a double header. Bottom. Yeah, so we just pick this one up here just as we're drifting. Damn. Just bouncing the bottom with the, well, my favorite color is yellow. Don't much change much. And we'll see how big he is. It doesn't seem that big. Okay. Fighting pretty good. These are really good eating. Oh, he's not bad, Don. Not bad. Not bad. So we'll have to go through a little bit of the, uh, little bit of the technique here. What do you want, net? Sure. That's good. All right. The net right there. Thank you. Just put him in the net. This is the first walleye of the day. Holy luck. And we're going to keep bad. these, right? Yeah, we're going to keep these. We're not going to catch and release the walleye today. No. No. They're good eating. Flay really them good. up nicely and really good to eat. That's why you've got me doing the dark side technique right now. Yeah, we got Don on the jig because we're fishing for our. <laughs> annual walleye harvest harvest well off to the different spot yep. mm -hmm. so how many holes you figure we're gonna hit today oh maybe a dozen a dozen and, and there's there's probably there's 30 or 40 oh, on yeah, here there's, there's some really good holes yeah. there's some good holes and there's some better holes yeah so we're gonna start with the good holes and hit the better holes 
<laughs> good yeah. holes, better holes. It sounds yeah. like it's all good. That's all good, but you know, there's some holes that really produce, yeah. and that's what we're gonna. And you know, try. like I said, I'm gonna stick with I'm gonna stick with that jig for a bit. Stick with the jig. Because we're after the meat. Right? Yeah. We want to catch a bunch of meat yeah. today. Have our normal fish fry that we always do yeah. for the gang. Exactly. And then, then we put on the fly rods. I have fun with both. Me too. And we've never shown me on the dark side. Eh? That's good so for you. It really we'll see is. all the comments that come in. Definitely send me your comments. It's, it's worth it to see, it to is. try that. Yeah. I like it. It's a lot of fun. Well, let's head on now. Well, we moved to the new hole. First, first cast. First cast. Slid back a little bit with the boat and dropped it. There's a hole here. Nice little pocket. And that's how it should be. I mean, we should be getting into these walleye. Where there's one, there's more. Yeah. So, and this feels like a bigger walleye. Again with the jig. Nice. You know. Hey, get the meat. Get the meat. <laughs> Right. Double header. Good job, John. Wow, are they ever in here? They're yeah, they're stacked. stacked. So we should catch your limit fairly quick today, I think. Wow, it's good. And then I'm going to change over to the fly rod. Like this, I said, this is crazy. This would be a perfect spot for the fly rod method. Okay. It's just and kind we'll of sandy down here. We'll take that out right now. Sure, but there he is. There, I got a little guy. Here's mine. Oh, this guy's a. Uh, is this a re return? Oh, he is now. No, he's got he, off. He's a little small. Well, you got a good one. When we know they're this size in here, you don't nice. mind losing a little guy. There's a good one. These are perfect size eaters. This size here, a couple pounds. Nice fillets. The hook just okay. popped out. We're fishing barbless for the walleye too because that's the regulations on the river. Nice so fish. We're, that's we're gonna, a good size. We're going to put them in the live well. So there's no water in here right now. It's just a storage area for them. Jeez, first two casts. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. You don't have another one yet. I'm about to recast. Reset. I'm still liking my jig though. Look at this. I can still cast. Look at that. You still have it. That's awesome. It's like riding a bike, you don't forget. Give it another hour, then I'm changing over the fly rod. We'll show everybody the technique, and we're going to show everybody wet line technique for walleye. So it's going to be a full sink line, fairly stiff rod, so we can plant the hook. And it's a real good way to get them, too. There's a lot of fish that take it on a little bit of movement, so we'll get into that technique yeah. a little bit later. Absolutely. But this is kind of fun, catching fun. all the meat. It's a nice day on the river. <laughs> oh, there we go. Go on. <laughs> See? Just like that. That's nothing to it. Oh, this one's got some meat, Dwayne. This one feels good. Yeah, yeah this, this seems pretty good. This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to bring a, a fish in with the gear. You can put a lot Look of pressure on him. The ugly stick rod, and you can put some heat on him. I love it. Oh, got a wasps all around. Yeah, this isn't a bad fish. All right. Good job, Don. It's not bad. That's hey, that's perfect. a good size. That's a good eating size. Like Dwayne said, bar look at barbless hook just falls out. It's really nice. That's another nice eater. And again, reminder to grab the fish below, the, above the, like in by the pecs. Yeah. Because wow. these spines are, are very sharp. Yeah, nasty. And look and at the teeth on the them. The teeth too. are sharp and the gill plates are very sharp. So you can actually hurt yourself. So grab them and kind of numbs them a bit. And well, stow, you know what I need to do? I think it's time. I'm putting the gear rod away, going to the fire rod. And we thought we'd show everybody the gear a little bit today. We've never really done that on the show, but again, we're out here fishing walleye, trying to catch the meat, and it is a great technique. Just, just a basic favorite, setup. Your I'll, favorite, oh, wasp. Your favorite color is? Yellow. You know, yellow, like you said. Uh, what way to what way to jig? So half ounce, generally. Half ounce jig, gets you down. You know, I'm using probably 10, 12 pound test. You don't have to be, you know, it's just normal spinning gear. So when we come back, get the fly rods out. Should be fun there too. Yep. I don't even know what kind of rod I have here. It's a fly rod of some kind. Hardy Demon, nine foot five weight. Okay. Oh, that's a good one, Dwayne. Look at the five weight, like, and I nailed, I planted them hard this time, really yes. hard. But look at this, look at the bend in this rod. Yes. I should have an A weight. I really should have a heavier rod for these walleye. Cause they, once they dig down, they're tough. Oh, well, a little I'll just drop sour, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, look at it. Well, that's a good size too. It's a nice fish. My hooks in there. Yeah, just got your. Oh, there you're free. Shit. You're free. Oh, and he's just in the mouth. But look at that. Not a big fish, but look at the bend he puts in this rod. Oh, that's pretty good size, Dwayne. Yes, nice. That's again perfect look, eater. All right. Okay. Look at the fly. Look at the yeah. fly just sitting right in the. Yeah, that's a perfect lip. perfect eater. That yeah, size. That? Yeah. yeah, we like those. Barbless hook, but yeah. look at how easy this comes out. I mean, look at where I'm hooking them. 
I've got, and these are my these are my big salmon hooks. Like, look at the size of that hook. It's a it's a big hook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and even, it, well, you know it is. It's had a lot of fish though. See, yeah. and I tie the little nub. We'll go to the bench right after this, and I'll tie you one up. But see, I put the okay. little stripper so the rabbit doesn't get flung oh, around. Oh, very nice. Yeah, and we'll tie you up a similar pattern. That's but a, there's another good eater. It is good job. So that's the third or fourth one I've lost now, or got in. Like that's the first one I got in, but I've lost three or four nice ones yeah, like yeah. that, only because. And I made, the, I made the big mistake. I went with a five-way rod when realistically planting these fish with a bigger hook, I should be using probably a six to an eight weight. Maybe explain a bit about, you know, what you're looking yeah. for in a pocket. Because, I mean, we've got our favorite pockets. We've You've got, got your great holes. But we're always kind of looking for seams, aren't we? Yeah, we're, we're looking slow. for seams, like, and not really fast water. Kind of a slow-moving current, like a back eddy. Water that comes in on a bit of a push, okay. but not too quick, but just slowly sliding through. But we're, we're feeding, we're actually we're fishing, we're casting into the back eddy, along our flight of sink, but we're kind of fishing that kind of dead That's zone. right, yeah, right where the main water column, and then it goes slack. Yeah. So right at that seam line is where you're catching And them. that's where they're stacked. That. There's got to be, you know, how many fish? They're just stacked in there. They're stacked there. They'd be hundreds, probably. Could be. Because, yeah. I mean, I've, I've tagged, once I changed yeah. over, yeah. I've tagged five or six in a row. That's right, and that seems to be working better than the jig. It is. Yeah. It's working better than the jig, because yeah. every time I'm bringing it back, maybe it's because they want the movement. A jig, it's you know, you're natural. on the bottom. This is. They're, they're looking for patterns that size. Right. It imitates the bait fish in here, which yeah. are dace and sculpin. Yeah. So why not? Yeah. Makes sense. Fly fishing. I'm going to switch over. <laughs> Darn right. See where he hit that? Yep. That could be a rainbow. I think it is. Yeah. I think I got a nice little rainbow on there. Not a little rainbow either. Looks like a good size rainbow. Oh yeah, nice bowl. <laughs> you can get it all in here, Dwayne. You got I it. I cast a little further out in the flow. My luck. I think I got a nice rainbow on here. What is that? Is it? Yep. Yeah, it is. Well, you know what? Let's take a look. Yeah, it's a nice bowl. Oh yeah, there we go. Nice rainbow. <laughs> Jeez, look at that. It's all around fly. Look at that, and the bow hit it out in that water. So right in the bottom lip, barbless hook. We'll let that guy go, obviously, the sure. rainbow, but yeah. look at that, nice fish. Yeah, nice bow, eh? Yeah. That's a nice fish. Perfect. Ha! You know, oh, I, decided, I decided to cast a little further out in the fast <laughs> water, so I cast out in that faster water, let it swing back, yeah. and the big bow hits it. Yeah. What an all around pattern. Yeah. Well, you know what we're going to do? Let's go to the bench. Go to the bench. <laughs> Tie something up. up. That's unreal. Today on the bench, I'm going to tie you up a fly that works great for walleye. And of course, an appropriate name is the Wallinator. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. For the hook, we'll use a Mustad C70 SD size 2. We'll use some 3 aught red thread to tie with, some 20 pound cast for the tail guard, a 3 16 hot orange bead for the bead, some purple leech yarn for the body, and some purple tipped pink rabbit strips for the zonker tail and back. The first step to the fly is actually putting the bead on, and when you put the bead on, there's a big hole and a smaller hole. Make sure the smaller hole is pointed towards your eyelet, that's important. We're going to take our 6 aught or 3 aught thread, red thread, and tie it on and get a good base layer built right to the back of the hook. Now take your 20 pound test and cut off a piece about 2 inches long. We're going to tie this in as what I'm calling the tail guard so that the, the back rabbit strip doesn't flop over and get hooked up all the time. So tie this in, form a loop on the back. So extend it back, you know, an inch and a half, and then tie around and tie it on nice and solid. Take a strip of your pink and purple rabbit strip, put it on the back of the hook right at the bend, and part the rabbit just a little bit, just enough to get your, your thread in there, and just take about five or six good solid turns to lock it in at the rear of the hook, and then pull your rabbit back and tie your thread in front. And this is where we're going to put the body in the next step. Take a long strand of your leech yarn, and you want quite a long strand because you're going to wrap this over a couple times. You want a fairly, not a thick body, but uh, just a couple of wraps of this yarn because we want it fairly bushy. So we'll tie it in at the rear of the hook. Bring your thread forward to the bead, and then just wrap in, wrap in the yarn, and just wrap it towards the eyelet and then back a few times and form a, 
a fairly thick body and after we're going to pick this out to make it real bushy. The next step to the fly is very important. You want to take a dubbing pick and I've got this little emery board or something that actually the hook part of the velcro that pulls out the dubbing. We want to pick out the body. Uh, those walleye really like a, a lifelike look in the water so before we wrap over the final stage of our, our rabbit onto the back I want to pick out some of this dubbing so it streams back. The last step to the fly is take our rabbit that we had and pull it forward now to form the back and you want it uh, right to the back of the bead tie our thread over and finish off right behind the eyelet. You know take a few good few good turns and do a whip finish to finish it off. To finish the fly off we'll measure back on the tail and usually I like the tail about as long as the body so again it's you know the body's about an inch and a little bit so go back to the tail and just cut off it at the very end and pull that clear and that gives us the finished fly. Over the past few years this pattern has really proven itself in the Columbia River for walleye so give it a shot in your area and definitely send us an email at sfotf.ca to let us know how you make up with this fly. Okay, here's another one. <laughs> look at the look at the bend of the yeah, side weight, you know. Fun. Yeah, it is because I've got to just power them. I got to make sure they don't get off because they can shake those barbels such like nothing. And look at this. What a, <laughs> great, great. What a great way to target. Oh, it is. You know? And what I have is I'm going to go through the recommended setup right now. Is again I'm underpowered with a five weight. This five weight for these size fish, I should minimum have, you know, seven eight weight because it is tough to drag them up. I am casting a bigger fly, which isn't bad, and. You need the deep seven line. Okay. Oh. Okay. There he is there. Yeah, good size, eh, Dwayne? I guess that's Perfect. a keeper. Yeah. Keeper size. You bet it is. Oh, yeah, they put him in. Now just going through the recommended setup, so I'm gonna show everybody while Dwayne's looking after that. Is a deep seven line. Now this is a super fast sink line. It's made for a you know a seven, eight weight rod. I am casting with a five weight, again, underpowered, but you need that. You don't need a whole bunch of backing, really, because the walleye aren't going to take you into the backing. More usually, I mean, some of the bigger ones might, but you don't need a whole bunch of backing. But I've got my usual, you know, Islander large arbor. I got a real nice hardy demon. They make these in the nine foot, ten foot variety, five weight all the way up to nine or eight weight, nine weight. But the big key here is short leader. So my leader going to my fly line is maybe max five feet. That's it. That's all you want. Heavy pound test, I'm using 10 pound test because the walleye can chew it up pretty good. Of course our attractor fly, but again the most important thing you're going to need is this. Rio makes it, there's other fly, fly companies that do make it, but it's a real super fast sink, it's called a Super 7, uh, real fast sink fly line. So if you don't have this, you're not going to get to the bottom and you're not going to catch the fish. Simple as that. So make sure you've got the Super 7 fly line or a similar product that gets you down the bottom and you're going to catch some fish. That thing took line to Could be a good fish. Look at, my, look at this five-way rod. It's <laughs> got it. Just bent him, just keeping the heat on him so he can't get off. <laughs> you know, I know I'm not going to break my tippet, but if I take any of that slack off and I don't utilize this rod, that fish is going to get off because those barbless sucks just get chucked like nothing. This has got some meat to him. I don't know. You can never tell until you get him up, but he sure hit hard and he took line out. What tippet do you have? I got 10 pound tipping on. Here we go then. Yeah. Oh. Jeez. Man, he's fighting good. Look at him go. Yep. Man, how big is this fish doing? Hard to say. He's in the current. Yeah, he's in the current. But he's chunky. He's bigger than the last one, I think. He is, yeah. Try to get him on the reel here. Oh. Look at that. Man. That's why. Gotta have the eight weight rod. You know, and then you don't have to worry about losing them. This is nice. Decent. I'm thinking he's pretty big. I gotta believe he's big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking this guy might yeah. be in the four or five pound range, maybe. Oh, Dwayne, look at him. Look at him down there. Oh, yeah, there. he's good. The three, four pound range. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Gone? Oh. Oh, that's a big Wally. That strained the five-weight rod, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> Did it ever? How big do you think that guy is? That's a decent-sized wally, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes, it is. It's about, I don't know, just guessing, four, 
And I, you know he's pretty big because he actually took line. He even got in the current, and that guy took line on me. You gotta wash those, gotta wash those teeth. Like right in the corner of the yap, you know, right there. And it is barbless. It's just kind of oh there, it's there. It's around my hand there. There we go. Arm. Yeah, what is that guy? He's got four or five. Yeah. Four for pounds sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's some good. Flies. Nice. That's a nice. Look at the teeth on these guys. Nasty, nasty teeth, big eyes. Oh, they're just voracious. So I'll get out of your way. I'll let you put them in the hole here. Put them in the hole. In the hole. Well, thanks for the great day on the water. Always a pleasure to have you. I know, it's we great. always have a lot of fun. Yeah. We had the, uh, you know, this time of year, as Dwayne said in the intro, it's early September. It is a very tough time on any river. I think any river or lake, it's what I call the dead season, right? You got those, the, the heat of the summer, the mm -hmm. fish aren't up, you really got to work for them. But if you hit a river and it's generic to the crow's nest, the bow, you know, the Columbia like this, the elk, the same area, it doesn't matter which river you're fishing, you get those hot waters and you have to adapt. And that's what we did today. We had the luxury of fishing for walleye, yeah. which we spanked them pretty good, right? We went down deep with the wet line. We mm -hmm. actually got a rainbow, not much dry fly. You know, we could sit out here until dark. That's probably when the dry fly yeah, happens. Yeah, we'll see some action late, late, but. But one thing about the Columbia too, when people come out, is they've always asked me when the best seasons are. Okay, if the Columbia is open year round, so to me, March, April, May, phenomenal. Like outstanding fishing, mm -hmm. big woolly buggers, big uh, streamer patterns, great fishing, big fish. Uh, June, July, dry fly, right? Indicator and dry fly, yeah. it's some of the best you're ever gonna have for big rainbow. Right. August, what do you say about August? Walleye, right? Well, yeah, the time mid-August comes, the caddis flies have slowed yeah, right down. Yeah, and so. it's time to go down. You know, it's warm, whatever. You can come mm -hmm. out, enjoy yourself. It's nice warm water, right? Catch a few fish, it's good. Mm -hmm. September cranks again for uh, some of the dry flies still, some of the late uh, emerging mayflies, and the hoppers get real good. Mm -hmm. And then October, November, all through the winter, big time streamers again. That's right. So it's, a, it's just a great fishery. You have the luxury of being on here all the time, and so do I. That's right. And it is, yeah. we talk about all the time being the best fishery in the world. Yeah. Uh, Toss it is, we, it's, yeah. it's our home and it's yeah. great water. Yeah. But uh, if you want to get a hold of people to come out here, get a hold of Dwayne for sure as far as a guide, Mountain Valley Sport Fishing. Fishing at KootenayFlyFishing.com. Dot com, and of course ours now. Everybody knows, have seen our website at sport, uh, sportfishingonthefly.ca and also sfotf.ca, the big revamp. Kale, our web guru has done a phenomenal job all those videos, all the daily blogs, we're having a blast presenting it to you and I hope everybody's enjoying it. But today, it was all in the Columbia. Remember when you're out here, take care, conserve your waters, give this lad a call. Take you out fishing, I'll have a lot of fun, it gets you into fish. We'll see you next time when we take sport fishing on the fly. Okay, gotta get the hat all straight here. Want more information? Visit us at sfotf.ca. To watch all our latest Sport Fishing on the Fly episodes and to order Sport Fishing on the Fly merchandise, head to www.sfotf.ca and if you'd like to book an adventure like this one shown, head to onthefflyadventures.ca and book yourself the trip of a lifetime.